Hello and welcome to the Heat Check Podcast, the Miami Herald's Miami Heat Podcast. I'm David Wood and I'm joined, as always, on the other line by Anthony Chang, who now agrees with me that Steph Curry is the second best player in the league. Uh, I don't know if I would <laughs> say that, but he's a lot closer to the second best player in the league than I thought <laughs> two weeks ago. I'll say that, yeah. Uh, I had fun watching the NBA Finals. Part of it is because like, I'm, I'm a... It, obviously, I've said a lot of times I'm kind of a Steph stan, but uh, I, I had fun watching, you know, it's not the same as like the Bucks winning or the like, uh, obviously, Heat fans are not going to like, but the Mavs winning in 2011, mm-hmm. where it was like a team kind of banging its head against the wall over and over again and finally breaking through. But it had some of those vibes different than like when the Lakers won in the bubble or, um, you know, uh, the war. Warriors uh, with Kevin Durant. It was it was it was fun to see them kind of get back uh, the way the way uh, teams are supposed to win championships. Um, but we're not going to talk very much about the NBA Finals because we are uh, quickly the NBA calendar moves fast. Uh, moves fast we are yeah. talking right now. It's about eleven thirty a.m. on Wednesday. The draft is uh, what thirty hours away, something like that. Basically, thirty eight yeah, hours, hours away. away. Thirty two yeah. hours away. Um, NBA free agency will start not long after that. Do we have an official start date for that yet? Or are they still June 30th, basically, right? We'll be yeah. when they, they start negotiating. Yeah, they haven't they haven't officially announced it yet, but the expectation is June 30th at 6 p.m. Teams can start negotiating. Yeah. And July 1, the moratorium is begins. The and then I think July 6 yeah. is maybe the first day players can sign. So, yeah. So, very soon. Uh, we're moving fast. Um, let's start with, we'll, do a lot of draft later in this episode. He has one pick, uh, 27th overall. Um, I think both of us think there's a pretty good chance they might trade that pick. But uh, let's start with some free agency stuff. Uh, PJ Tucker, who is as expected uh, going on, or is expected to opt out of his contract with the Heat. We've expected it kind of all along since he got off to a really good start this year and, and clearly looks like a guy who could command a little bit more money. Um, the thing here, though, is uh reporting today that basically every contender is into pj tucker and willing to maybe give him the full mid-level exception which would you say is about worth upwards of 10 million yeah, 10.3 million um, starting salary yep 10.3 million uh obviously a lot of teams could also go as long as three years on pj tucker um i think last time we were two weeks ago we both thought this was kind of like a lock that pj would be back next year the heat really uh it was a pat riley really said he would like to have him back yeah. Um, he's a, a really good cultural fit. He was very good for them this year. Um, but this complicates things, right? If the market gets really crowded for him, how how expensive are they willing to go for PJ Tucker, who is a very good role player, but but a role player nonetheless? Yeah, thirty seven years old, right? So yeah, you, you talk about a three year contract. You're you're talking about playing paying a guy, you know, north of ten million dollars at age forty or close to age forty. That's that's a big decision you have to make. Um, but I'll start with this. I, I still think PJ Tucker will be back with the Heat next season. Um, but it is going to be interesting because if the reports are true, like Chris Haynes uh, from Yahoo Sports, Keith Pompey, who covers the Philadelphia 76ers, Keith Pompey reported that Philly's like prepared, like basically going to shed salary, trying to shed salary to try to to try to uh, acquire PJ Tucker. Um, which would be interesting because he's going, you know, he'd go to a team that's kind of competing for with the Heat, you know, for in the East as you know one of those top tier teams. Um, but look, if if teams do offer him a ten point three million dollar exception, the full exception, the Heat have that to offer him. The problem is, it would hard cap the Heat at one hundred fifty five million at the apron, which would be an issue, I think, because if you're giving PJ the ten point three million dollar exception plus all the salaries you already have, if you aren't able to shed any salary. You're going to be close to that line. So it's really going to limit the heat and what they could do um, as far as trying to change up this roster a little bit. If they use the full mid-level exception on PJ, that pretty much tells you that most of this roster is back because they, other than like minimum guys and maybe a draft pick or, you know, if they keep the pick, there isn't going to be much, there aren't going to be many resources left to keep to, to make changes. Secondly, if you use that full exception, that's your biggest like resource to try to bring back Caleb Martin because they don't have Caleb Martin's bird rights. They don't have cap space. Um, they're, you know, they're not gonna be able to sign Caleb for a minimum next year. He's going to 
he's going to demand more than that, obviously, and he's going to get more than that in the open market. Um, they're, you know, the way they could try to sign Caleb is that full exception. If it's used on PJ, they don't have that anymore. So that would pretty much say that, yeah, P- Caleb's probably not going to be back. Um, so it's going to be interesting. The, I, I'm sure the Heat would like to tell PJ, let's not try, let's not go all the way up to the full exception. Can we use a non-bird exception on you, which would allow the Heat to pay him $8.4 million. So it's $2 million less than the full exception. But they can say, look, no state tax. You're on a contender. Yeah, right. they, they do have, you know, it's $8 million in Miami is, I mean, I'm not a uh, tax law expert. Right, and I'm not either. $8 million yeah. in Miami is got to be pretty close to $10 million in, in Philadelphia, I would right. think. I don't know. Exactly, exactly. And you look, he he's a cultural fit, like you said. He's... He has the respect of Jimmy Butler. Him and Jimmy Butler are apparently pretty close. Um, Pat Riley and Eric Spolcher really value him. He's a starting power forward on a team that finished one win away from the finals. They used him in ways he hasn't been used like in 10 years, right? With the, the way he, you know, his usage yeah. rate, his passing, being able to do more than just spot up in the corner. Um, so he has a good role down here and he's a good fit. So I would think if the Heat are able to explain to him, look, 8.4 million, maybe we'll give you. Maybe they give him three years as a kind of a yeah. uh, an exchange for him taking less money. Um, but if they can do that, then that still frees up the exception to either sign somebody, another an outside free agent, or to bring back Caleb if that's what they want to use it for. So hmm. it'll be interesting to see what PJ wants. You know, if he's willing to do that, or if he says, "No, I'm getting the full exception from other teams, other contenders. I want that," and then the Heat will have to decide, you know, if they're going to go that far. So. I think PJ will be back because, again, they have the resources to do it, um, but it's going to be interesting um, to see how it plays out. Yeah, I I mean, I know, like you said, they could go to three years on the mid-level. I kind of have a hard time imagining a lot of contenders are going to want to be paying PJ Tucker that much money until he's 40 years old. Like, that's yeah. that's pretty ambitious. Like, I know he's good. He's obviously was a key part of a championship team two years ago in Milwaukee, was – a key part of a, a team that was um, one shot away from making the finals and, you know, maybe winning a championship uh, this year in Miami. Um, but that, that's a lot of money for PJ Tucker, who remember when we, we, we talked, we spent a lot of time talking about PJ Tucker on this podcast um, because he's in Houston. Remember that uh, the heat obviously were, were linked to him pretty heavily. And uh, when he was in Houston, people really kind of thought he was washed and, not mm-hmm. he wasn't. There were a lot of extending circumstances there, but like, I don't know. I uh, if you go three, if you if you if it's the make good and you can pay a little less to for the three, like you were saying, um, three years, and that's that's hey, you get them without using the mid level. I kind of get that. I, I and I think that is potentially a hammer that he could have because, like I said, I, I have a hard time imagining the Sixers are kind of one of. Hey, BJ Tucker, that kind of money until he's forty years old. When, you know, who that? Who knows what he's going to look like then? It's hard to imagine he's going to be a, a good NBA player by then. But I mean, maybe, maybe certainly, it's hard to imagine he's going to look like he looked like this year in, in three. Years. Yeah, for sure. And, and maybe it's something like two years and the third years, like incentive based. Like he plays right. a certain amount of games, he gets a certain amount of money. Maybe that's how they structure it. You know, to give him some like security in that third year when he's 39 40 um but it's gonna have to be at least two years i'm guessing it's not just gonna be able to, yeah, sure. not gonna have to be one year so you don't have to commit you know if the heat even if the heat give him the non you know able to do the non-bird with him which is obviously the preferred route so looking at two years like 17 point some you know five million for a guy who's again gonna be 38 39 when that contract is over um so i i think again i think that he bring him back but um, a little more interesting than I thought it would be. I'll say that because the the good thing for these is there's not much cap space out there, right? Especially the contenders, right. they don't really. There's not much cap space. So. Everyone is basically mid level. Yeah, like, minimums, mid level. I mean, teams can always read. You know, there's going to be trades inevitably, right. and, and that kind of stuff will free up space. But yeah, for the most, for you're not you're not like restructuring your whole roster to make room for PJ Tucker. No disrespect to PJ Tucker. <laughs> Well, Philly apparently is. Uh, trying I know. To... <laughs> I clear space, I guess. That's but... true, but yeah, but no, I I agree. I I I think that he can. I think that he and PJ could probably find a way to make it work. I really do. Um, but I know Pete fans are kind of scared. I get the sense he'd love to be back too. 
Yeah, I think so. I mean, you look at his Instagram story. He's. Uh, I mean, he seems heat. like he'd be happy. He seems like a guy who's happy pretty much everywhere except for Houston. But um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, but, uh, I, he won in Houston, but yeah, it seemed to kind of at the end wasn't too. Yeah, with the situation. I guess uh, sure. I forgot he was on. Like, was there when they were yeah. good still? Also. Yeah, James Harden, yeah. Peter Tucker reunion he, in Philly. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, we don't know. I don't know what their relationship is like. Maybe that's part of the calculus. But like you said. Uh, he seems to have respect from stars all across the league. Obviously, Jimmy sure. Butler, um, Kevin obviously Durant. Giannis. Yeah. Um, so he's gonna. He's a guy who's, who'll probably be happy anywhere. But um, you know, I, I think you know everyone within. He certainly seems to feel like they were really close this year, which they were obviously. And and I I wonder how much of that will play into uh, PJ's calculus, where you know I think he knows if he goes to Philly or Brooklyn, wherever. He'll be part of a good team, but in in Miami, he really knows like they're on the brink and could easily be in the finals next year. And if he's here for two or three years, he could get a ring here. Uh, and I think yeah. the chances here are just as good as they are pretty much anywhere else. It's going to be looking at him. Yeah, and one element Plus, to keep in mind with the Heat is remember they were in the situation was it two years ago with Jay Crowder? Um, yeah, they did not go the extra yard to keep him. I think they regretted that move the lot in the yeah. next year when they, they try to fill that hole with Mo Harkless and there's a bunch of different guys and it didn't work out. No one could replace what Jay Crowder gave them, the fit next to Bam. We saw mm-hmm. P.J. Tucker kind of fit that exact same way next to Bam. Yeah. Some would even argue even better than Jay did. Um, so I, I would think the Heat are going to make every effort possible because, you know, it's hard to find those type of guys, right? Because Bam is so unique. It's hard to find that type of four that really compliments him in that way. And PJ is one of those guys. So if PJ leaves, who's the, who's the four? Is it Caleb Martin? If you bring him back, right. does he fit the same way? I, I mean, Caleb's good and he has some of those, he has those same qualities, but he's not as good of a, I know he shot a high percentage from three, but not as good of a three-point shooter as PJ Tucker, at least over his career. Right. Um, right. And he's younger. Um, maybe defensively, he's obviously not as polished. So, I think there's the Heat are going to make it a priority to bring him back. It's just about how far they're willing to go. Right. Yeah. It's like you said, a lot of it could come down to how they feel about Caleb Martin's development. Some of it could come down to the draft because we're going to talk about a guy we, we both yeah. really like and fits a similar role, albeit obviously the kid we're going to talk about was like 20 years old and has no NBA experience. So um, there, there's a lot of variables. If they don't, so if they don't bring back PJ, Obviously, the Heat's capped out. How, how just uh, we'll talk more about this next mm-hmm. week when we do a free agency preview. But how else could they make that mid level work? Do you, do you think no matter what, they're going to try to find PJ, either use it on PJ or a PJ type defensive minded forward? Is that what you feel like is, is most likely for that spot? Yeah, I mean, it, it, if they want to bring back Caleb, it'd have to be used on him because sure. they have no yeah. other resource to bring back Caleb. They don't even have. Uh, I mean, they have the non-bird, but the non-bird, since he makes he was a minimum last year, is like $2 million or something like that. So you can't even use that because that's not enough. So you have to use, like, your mid-level exception. I'm guessing, you know, ideally the Heat wouldn't have to use the full mid-level exception. They can use the taxpayer one, which would not right. hard cap them. It's like 6 point, I forget, 6.3 or 6 point something mm-hmm. million. Um, maybe they can use that to bring back Caleb um, in that situation. The thing is, if you use a 10.3, then you can't use a 6, you know, the, the, the other exception. You, you can only right. use one of the two. Um, so that's why it's kind of if you use it on PJ, then Caleb it's pretty much gone. it's pretty much yeah. like Caleb is gone. Yeah. So I would think they'll try to use the exception on Caleb if they could get PJ to sign with the non-bird, take the eight million instead of the ten. Um, right. And that's why I've said it from the start, David. Like I think again, other than like minimum contracts and maybe replacing a few guys in the back end of the roster and a draft pick or two. Most of these guys, most of these teams are going to be back unless something unexpected happens and like right. Donovan Mitchell the big trade, trade or Donald yeah, Mitchell. barring a huge trade, this core is going to be very, very maybe identical to what it was last year because of what the Heat has to work with and the free agent class just isn't great. Yeah. Any other? Well, like I said, we'll we'll come back next week and really pre free agency. Um, but any final early free agency thoughts before we pivot over to the draft? Um, just one other quick one. I mean, they extended the qualifying offer. A $2.1 million qualifying offer to Caleb Martin, which was kind of a 
formality. Um, very expected. I mean, it makes him a restricted free agent, which means that he can match outside offers to keep him. But like we've talked about, they can only match outside offers up to the full $10.3 million mid-level exception mm-hmm. because that's all they have to offer him. So um, I don't think Caleb will, will get more than that in the open market. Um, so that's good that he should be able to match it if they have the exception available. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, Caleb, Caleb and PJ are going to, you know, again, they don't have their bird rights. So they need either the exception or the non-bird exception. Um, to bring those guys back. Victor Oladipo, they have his bird rights. So they could use, they could, they don't need an exception to bring him back. They could sign him over the cap up to the max, up to his max number. Um, so just, you know, something to keep an eye on. But we, we'll have next week to talk about all that before free agency officially opens up. Even though it feels like it started already with all these reports. Like if, if Philly does bring, if Philly does sign PJ Tucker, like how do you not investigate that at this point, right? Like, I'm not calling for an investigation, but like after what the NBA has done with Milwaukee and the Heat last year with Kyle Lowry, like all these reports saying Philly's trying to trade for to sign to sign PJ Tucker, they're interested in PJ Tucker, they're trying to shed salary. Like, how do you not look into that if you're the league? So it's just funny how like this always happens every year. Yeah, I was, it's kind of fun. like I kind of forgotten that the reason there are only 58 picks in this draft is because of like the Kyle was it Kyle Lowry and is it True Holiday? Is that why the Bucks lost their pick? It was the no, it was the Bogdanovich from the Kings. Oh, the Bogdanovich didn't even yeah. get him, right? Yeah, Bogdanovich yeah. they didn't even get. Yeah, they so, didn't even uh, get him. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I kept looking at the draft I'm like why? I can't remember why the Heat lost yeah. their pick, and then I remember like literally like yesterday I remember why it was, and now I'm thinking we're not going to have a lot of sixty pick drafts uh, unless right. they kind of change right. the rules, which will probably happen eventually. Um, for a little while, like it seems like we might be be talking about fifty eight, fifty nine pick drafts. For a while. Also, it's so funny that the Heat's punishment is they lose that pick. That like, well, it was going to be I think like the fifty fifth pick or something right, like that, really right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah something really late like, where they would, yeah, where okay, cool, they get they because they're going to get the first choice basically at an undrafted. Like, if you're an undrafted guy who's not going to go to the Heat, yeah. right? So like, really, it's more like they drop from having the fifty sixth pick to the fifty ninth pick or something. Like that's their punishment in my mind. By the way, the Daily News just tweeted, uh, their Nets reporter for the Daily News tweeted a sto- out a story that says, the Nets are one of a number of playoff and championship contenders with tangible interest in veteran free agent forward P.J. Tucker. Sources told the Daily News. Every, yeah. I mean, every contender is going to be interested in P.J. Tucker. At this point. I don't know if that's really news. Um, they obviously should be interested in P.J. It's got to be the agent out there, right? I was going to say, they're going definitely to- someone yeah. doing putting in work right now getting these headlines out yeah. there because they are ever Philly. Uh, Brooklyn, uh, Chris Haynes tweeting that there are multiple contenders going to expect to make a, a aggressive push for PJ Tucker. Um, really trying to build the market ahead of free agency. Props to them. All right, let's pivot over to the draft. It's one of my favorite days of the year. Um, as a college football, a college basketball fan originally, who has become obviously a big big NBA fan, uh, it's the real collision of my basketball interests. Um, Honestly, I went through like half this year not even remembering the Heat had a pick. Uh, I think until at some point you informed me. Um, so they'll pick 27th on Thursday, uh, very late at night. If they pick at all, I guess that's where we should start. Um, I have a couple specific guys I think both of us want to talk about. But um, give me like percentage chance you think they actually make this pick. I say 50-50. Kind of a safe answer, but I just – I. I'm like, I'd be, I wouldn't be surprised either way. I think it'll really come down to kind of that night when that pick is coming up. Like, if there's a team out there that really wants a guy at 27 that's still available, or maybe the Heat want a guy that has dropped at 27 and didn't expect to be there, and they make right. the pick. But I, w- I wrote a story today kind of previewing the draft, just looking at the previous, I think, four times they've picked in the 20s, or they had a pick and entered the draft with a pick in the 20s. They've traded on draft night three times. And, and the other times not- did they drafted Shabazz Napier? One of those times was when they drafted Shabazz Napier, but they yeah. trade like they actually moved up in the draft to, to take him. Like, oh really? So they made a draft night trade. They were at twenty. Let's see. Uh, I think they were like at twenty. Hold on. Sorry about that. Fill time. Fill time. Fill time. Um, I love that. that the Shabazz Napier pick is one of the great moments in NBA draft history. Honestly. Yeah, they 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 picked PJ Harrison with the twenty sixth pick. And then they quickly, it was part of a trade to acquire Shabazz Napier, who was taken at 24 by the Charlotte Hornets. Gotcha. So, I, I mean, I, 
I could see something like that where in each of the four times, even though they traded three of those picks, like they still made a pick in the draft. Oh, okay. Interesting. But they like either moved back and got like, you know, future second round pick or a future conditional first round pick, or they traded up where they like packaged something with their pick that night to move up a couple of spots to get a player they wanted. So I could, I, I think they'll make a pick. I just don't know if it's going to be at 27, right? Mm-hmm. The only time they've, they've stuck you know, to, you know, made the pick at 20 and kept the player in the 20s was precious a few years ago when they took him at 20. And right. obviously yeah. he... Of course, they traded him uh, like a year later. later. Yeah, yeah, a yeah, year later. Months, but um, yeah, yeah. I, I, if I had to predict, I would say it's something like that where they stay in the draft, but they either move up or, or probably more likely move back and maybe get an extra pick. Um, and they don't necessarily pick at 27. That'd be my prediction. Yeah. So obviously, like the the you know draft the stereotype of the draft night trade is the blockbuster, right? And it does not seem like there is some anything imminent with Beal or or Mitchell, like. Right. So the one thing that is like they're not going to trade this pick to get a super. It's not going to be part of that giant. In all likelihood, not going to be part of that giant package with Tyler Hero and three first round picks. You know, all, all that kind of stuff. Um. So it does you know, put them kind of in an interesting position where they want to keep. You know, assuming they want to be in the market for one of those big trades. They got to make sure they have good future assets. Part of that could be maybe if they draft guy we like EJ Liddell, he becomes part of whatever trade happens. Or like you said, they could trade down, maybe acquire more future picks, keep some of that flexibility. Um, But yeah, I mean, we're talking about obviously how capped out the heat is in, in the draft. When you're in this position where you don't have a lot of roster flexibility, the draft is one of the best ways to acquire good cost controlled players obviously the heat have done other you know their success in undrafted free agency has been basically just as important as their success in the end of the first round um you said even like their late ish first round picks like bam and and tyler those guys are like those were teens picks like the right. 20s is different Late in the lottery um, yeah yeah so this is a little different um but uh, the the trade so to me like and I'm I'm sure that he have a lot of guys they have different opinions about but to me like the draft obviously a lot of people talk about how deep it is up at the top but it kind of falls off for me around the 20s you get a lot more of like the kind of pre- which you probably do about every draft but there's some drafts where you're going to like oh, I kind of like like three or four guys in the 20s um, to me it's like really going to be I think that he like you're saying maneuvering trying to get the guy they like, um, whether it is they try to make a trade up um, to get one of these guys who might fall a little bit. We'll talk about a couple of different names. Um, or if all those guys are off the board, like, I don't know, trade down, tr- get future picks, keep that flexibility to make uh, a bigger blockbuster deal uh, in, in a couple of weeks, if that's what we come to come up to. Like, yeah, I, I, I wonder if they could, like, if, if they have nothing they like, could they trade their first round pick? Like, not for a future first round pick, but like something like where you just kind of stockpile a few more. But yeah. Didn't necessarily pick in this draft, but maybe 2023, 2024 picks where you, you just kind of pushing things a little bit further and, and have more of those assets to, to yeah. flip. Yeah. I mean, it could be. I mean, I, you know, it's hard. It's a 27th pick, right? So you're, it's, obviously, if they get any future first round pick, it's going to be heavily protected. Yeah, um, exactly. But, you know, even that's valuable. Or maybe you get two second round picks instead. I mean, he'd almost right, second round exactly. pick for like the next like thirty years. I feel like so maybe right, that yeah, would be valuable second, for that. Trade down to thirty seven, and you get yeah. a twenty twenty three second round pick or something. Yeah, I mean, I think they're gonna try to squeeze every ounce out of the pick, right? I mean, that's what teams do, mm-hmm. and that's what the Heat does. Um, they're really good at getting value. So if they if they don't really like anybody specifically at twenty seven, they'll try to get an extra pick out of it. Why not, right? Yeah. Um, and another thing is financial, like. I wrote, I, I kind of did a three-part series this, this week about, one, making the case for them to make the pick, two, kind of exploring why they might trade the pick, and three, kind of saying what, you know, what history says they might do, which is what we talked about with them, you know, what they've done in similar situations in recent years. But some of it might be financial. Like, the case for making the pick is 27th pick is slotted to make about, like, $2.2 million in the first year. Maybe you don't bring back Caleb Martin. And that's, you know, you, you sign another, you, you draft a four, you have a guy at 2.2 million, which is obviously a very team-friendly contract under team control for five years. Like that's a valuable thing to have as a as a team, right? Especially when you're the Heat when you're capped out. Like if you have a young player, 
making $2 million uh, next year and you have them under team control for five years, like that's an asset. Um, the other thing is the case for trading it, you know, the financial reasons are, let's say you trade the 27th pick for like two second round picks. The second round picks probably going to sign for around a million, like the minimum. So you, that's a $1.2 million difference. Like that matters. Right. That matters when you're right up against a tax or even right up against a hard cap. If you have, if you have to use that full exception, maybe they, he'd say, we can get two players in the second round for 2 million total, as opposed to one player for 2.2 million. That makes a difference for us. That's going to allow us to uh, a little bit, you know, it's not much, but a little bit of flexibility to maybe go a little further for PJ or signing Caleb if they have to use the full exception. So there are a lot of variables at play. Um, again, I, I think... I think it's 50 50 they make the pick but if i had to predict i think that they make some type of move um, even if it's not at 20 like them yeah they'll make some even if it's like if just it's to move back or something like yeah I, I think it makes sense if you know the difference between a 27th pick and a 38th pick or 35th pick is not that much most likely yeah you could save up 1.2 million it might make some sense for them to do that yeah, especially because, you know, let's get into some players. A lot of the guys I like, uh, most of the mock drafts do not have them falling to the heat. They have them falling around the heat, like 24, mm-hmm. 23, stuff like that. Um, so, you know, if, if a guy like EJ, Led- and again, we're we're talking about guys we like, not necessarily guys heat the heat liked, but if like EJ Liddell falls to number 27, I'm making that pick because... To me, that is, he's such a heat guy, defensive, you know, a little undersized, a little P.J. Tucker-ish, um, great defensive player, um, power forward type guy, like, gives you that. If you bring P.J. back, he can learn under P.J. and be your next P.J. Um, kind of similar to Grant Williams, obviously, who we saw just play a really key role in the Celtics run to the finals. Um, or, you know, if you lose P.J., you know, you know he's, E.J. Liddell as a rookie is probably not going to emulate what P.J. gives you, but... Um, he can do a little bit of that. And, uh, he's a guy who I think would be a contributor pretty much right away. Um, and, you know, you talk about what guys you can play in the playoffs and EJ Liddell, you know, it's finding big men who can do that is one of the hardest things in the league right now. And EJ Liddell certainly feels like a guy who can be a, uh, a playoff performer. Yeah, I agree. I mean, EJ Liddell is an, another, a guy I like as well. I mean, he have two needs, right? I mean, if they if they're really drafting for need, which I'm not sure right. they'll do, we could talk about that in a little bit. But it's a four, like depth at the four, guys you can play next to Bam, a guy who's a versatile defender who could shoot a little bit. Um, Isla Dell's kind of like fits that mold, like you said, undersized four who can guard up, even has guarded fives in, at Ohio State um, at times. Um, so he kind of fit that PJ Tucker role, that Jay Crowder mold, that. Um, Grant, again, the Grant Williams, like I see a lot of Grant Williams. I'm not saying he's going to be as yeah. good as him, but like he, he's that type of guy. He has that type of skill set where if he does kind of live up to his potential, he could be like a Grant Williams type player, which would fit really nicely next to Bam. Um, and he get a lot of use out of those type of players. Mm-hmm. Um, so he, it makes, he makes sense. And then also, I mean, they need three. You can never have an, enough 3 and D wings in, this, in today's NBA. Um, so if the, he can find that, um, I think that would be a big help for them, especially like, like guys with length. Um, versatile defenders you could knock down a three. Dalen Terry is a guy in their range who stands out to me. Seven foot wingspan, I think he's like six six. Um, athletic wing, not the best shooter, but from what I've read, he projects to be like a decent shooter in the NBA eventually. Um, so he's a guy that intrigues me. Um, but yeah, like if I'm looking for need, it's either the four versatile four that like like uh, Liddell or a three and D wing. Um, like Dale and Terry. Yeah. And frankly, when you talk about like drafting for need and then you list those two things, like kind of anyone you draft is going to fill. Yeah. The needs, right. There are, like, there are many points. There are many like, this isn't a point guard draft, right? Like, right. It's, and you could, and you could even draft a point guard and he could play off the ball for the first couple of years of his career. You know, maybe he's not going to get, like, just because of what we know the heat prioritizes in terms of skill sets, like they're not going to draft a, like Shabazz Napier at this point, quite frankly, like yeah. a really small point guard who can't defend. If they draft a point guard, it was always going to be a really good defensive point guard who could potentially play at, at the two a lot for you or play point guard next to uh, Tyler Hero or whatever right. it, it might, the thing might be. Um, but like, yeah, well, like, like, well, like, they just got guys, 
a, a, a type that they're going to look for is going to be yeah. able to fall into that those two groups. Like the Ringers mock drop at Kevin O'Connor, which I always look at. It's really great, very in depth. Um, has the Heat taking Kennedy Chandler, who's a five eleven point guard from Tennessee, and kind of compare guys uh, player comps are Darius Garland, Maxi, Jameer Nelson. Like, I mean, I guess right, but like. Do you can you see that? Like I, I know you're saying like no. he could play next to Kyle Lowry, but another five eleven guard. Like I, I just, it's hard for me to imagine them taking that type of player when you know, like we've talked about, they need other, they need wings, they need size, they need length, they need some front court depth. Like, can you see Kennedy Chandler being a guy that they take at twenty seven if he's there? No, I think they like if they get a point guard, it'll be like, and he's not even necessarily a point guard, but like Christian Brown, maybe the yeah. Kansas, Kansas guy is yeah. like shooter. He was a great athlete, right? Like, yeah. obviously, like he has groomed to grow as a defender, but you look at those athletic tools and his size and his strength and stuff, and you think, like, we can make this guy a good defender. And he's really more of a two than a point guard. But, like, if I'm talking, he's a guard. He's not a wing. I think they could draft a guard if it's a guy who's got a little like bit a, of size. Like a combo guard, yeah. Yeah, a combo guard who's got a little bit of size to him. Or a point guard who's a great defensive player. Um, and projects as a great defensive player. And kind of like another guy I really like in the range for the Heat is Walker Kessler, who's a cent- center from Auburn, um, incredible shot blocker. Um, but like, he's just not a Heat guy at all. Like he, he could be, have a really good career as a backup center somewhere, a defensive anchor who's also got some, some good offensive skills. And um, I think people think could be developed into a pretty good shooter, but like, that's just not – he's just not at all the type of player the Heat is looking for, even if they think he can be good for someone else. Like, he's just not the kind of guy that Eric Spolster is going to want to be given 15 minutes a game to. What do you think about Jake uh, – I don't know how to say his last name. Lara- Laravia. 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 Yeah, yeah. Laravia. Honestly, like, Laravia. I, didn't wa- I don't remember watching him a lot last year. Um, interesting to me. I feel like he might fit if he's there. But. Yeah, I mean, there, there's some other guys who, again, like maybe the, some of these guys might be like trade down. Can't because, like, again, like let's just say they really like EJ Liddell, who again mm-hmm. really seems like a guy they would like, and he goes 24, and then all of a sudden they've got like eight other guys they like kind of like. That's when you do that trade down, right? Oh, You're for like, sure. Yeah. Well, kind of like like Wesley, kind of like Christian Brown, kind of like. Is there much of a difference between all these guys? Maybe there is, and, like, they see something that we're not seeing. But, like, right. to me, like, Jake Lar- Laravia, Christian Brown, um, Kendall Brown, who was, like, a five-star recruit and kind of had an underwhelming season at Baylor, but is, like, a high upside guy. Uh, Blake Wesley from Notre Dame. Um, you know, there's just, like, this whole run of guys. Um, I guess people like Marjan Beauchamp, Beauchamp yeah. Champ from – I was when I was looking through the draft, it's, like, every single draft has – someone different for the heat. The only names I really saw come up like multiple times, I think were like Wesley, Dale and Terry, who's a guy right. you like. Um, Christian Brown, I saw a couple of times. I think a lot of that is just like, he's kind of like Tyler Hero. So like maybe the heat will like him too. Yeah. He's, not, he's definitely got the Tyler Hero like swag to him. Um, oh, he's a better athlete than Tyler Hero. Um, I, I kind of really like him, honestly. Like, I don't know if the heat necessarily needs him, but I love like watching him in the tournament. Um, but yeah, after like big, like again, like EJ Liddell is again a guy I really like. Like after that, like all these names kind of feel the same to me. What do you think of Nikola Jovic? I just want him for the name. That's I awesome. Not How many times be- would I mistype Jokic by mistake? <laughs> uh, that would be that would be great. Trevor um, Keels, that's another name I saw a couple times from Duke. Good size and a shooter. Um, you know what? But I again, actually these think- are all like these are all like guys who like I don't know. Is there a difference if you get a like? Do you care if you don't get them? Like, if you get them at 37, great. But, like, if you get them at 27, like, is it, I don't know. Like, it, just none of them feel like yeah. home run. That, that, that's Not home run, think... like, locks to be, like, yeah. really good at players. I mean, obviously, it all depends. It's all subjective, right? Players. Yeah. It's also, like, it all depends on what the Heat's board looks like. But I have to think that chances are that at 27, they'll feel good about a bunch of different guys. And right. that's why they'll try to trade down, probably. Yeah. Unless and, there's one I mean, guy they love. Unless there's one guy they love, but chances are there's not, right? I mean, there's a chance, but I would say mo- likelihood is there won't that one guy won't be available and they'll try to trade down. Maybe they won't be able to trade down because other teams won't be willing to do it, but I'm guessing they'll try, yeah. right, in that scenario. So I, as far as drafting for need and drafting, like, best player available, 
I think we can like kind of take from what the Heat have done recently um, to say that they're most likely going to go with the best player available. Yeah, because they've done it in recent years. Like they drafted Bam out of bio. They had a son Whiteside on the max contract. Right. They drafted Precious Achua. They had Bam out of bio on the roster. He's a franchise player. <laughs> so they drafted Tyler Hero. They had Deion Waiters and a bunch of different guards yeah. on the roster. Like they've done it so many times before. Where like they'll figure it out later, type of thing. And and they're not going to just draft based on need. Um, yeah, obviously, if yeah. you could do, fill both boxes, that'd be ideal. But would I be shocked if they drafted a point guard? If there's a really good point guard available, I guess not because they've done it before in the past where they've drafted a guy that at a position they really, you know, haven't needed. Yeah, I mean, again, like I think the thing it basically comes down to is they're not it's kind of not either. You don't draft based on need or best player available. You bet the Heat. Their philosophy is basically draft guys who we think fit. Fits, what yeah. we want to do and so i guess you could say that's fit but it's basically like there's just guys who they're never going to draft and they'll just won't be on their board even if they're theoretically the best player available um so like i, I think whoever they draft is a guy they can and with the way basketball is played now positionless all that kind of <laughs> stuff like you can draft a point guard like i said and he can play next to kyle lowry if you think he's a good enough defender or he can play next to tyler here if you think he can really kind of counterbalance that but like they're just not going to draft, like you said, they're not going to draft like a short point guard who can't defend. Like, the Heat yeah. will like, never have no, no, another definitely point like that definitely. ever again. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. And and they also have Gabe Vincent, too. Like, they really don't need another right. point guard. And I know yeah, Kyle Lowry's not young, but... but they're going to draft a guy who they think can play with yeah. all these... Because they're, they're trying to win now. You know, they're trying to develop. But in all likelihood, when you draft 27, a lot of, this is a lot of the area where you, like, get a guy who's role play. Good role player now, good role player in a couple of years. Like at 27, you could draft Kendall Brown, who maybe you're like really high upside, but like those guys in the 20s, in the late 20s, those those guys don't typically become NBA all stars. Yeah, and it's it's hard to really like. Obviously, you want a guy who can be an immediate contributor, especially because you're in win now mode and you know your windows right now. <laughs> but you also can't rely on that either, because most likely, like, at 27, you're not going to get a guy who's going to play important minutes for you next season as a rookie, right? So you almost have to, like, might have to just settle for a guy with upside, because there really aren't many guys in that range that I think will be able to give you, like, be like a Tyler Hero who's right. playing the most fourth quarter minutes on the roster, or Bam Adebayo who, yeah. you know, was playing consistent minutes as a rookie. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if they draft a guy, and whoever they draft at 27, if they keep the pick isn't even in the rotation next season. Like, it might just be an yeah. upside thing. And that's not ideal for a team looking to win now, but that's the situation they're in at 27. Like, that, there's right. no other, you know, you're not going to get a guy who's a ready-made rotation player usually that late in the in the first round. A mm-hmm. um, couple other guys, just, like, if they fall. I like, I love Okai Baji from Kansas. Um, he's kind of project. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes in the lottery, honestly, just because I think he's... Well, maybe the best catch and shoot guy in the draft and a good defender and ready to contribute right away. Um, yeah, the like ringer has him going 14. So if he goes in a lottery, he'll probably start like next year, honestly, yeah. for like whatever bad team he winds up on. Um, uh, Dale and Terry again is a guy who might need to fall a little bit. Um, who else? Like Ty Ty, you like Ty Ty Washington? Yeah, I like Ty Ty. He's a guard. He's a guard, but he's like a 6'3 he's guard. Been, yeah, he's got enough yeah. size where I, I think you could just, because he could play again, like he could play next to Tyler Hero or whatever. Like, um, Tar- Tari Eason is another one who really does not seem like he's going to fall, but um, from LSU. Um, like, again, like if one of those guys fall, the Heat are in potentially like not home run swing territory because you're not really hitting home runs here, but you're like, oh, these guys are going to help us right away. Yeah. Like like you said, there's a lot of guys, in all likelihood, I think you're right. Like, if none of these guys that we've kind of met, like, again, I think Liddell helps you right away. Like, Agbaji, I think, helps you right away. Dale and Terry maybe helps you right away. Um, after that, like you said, it's it's not a lot of guys who, who are going to help you right away. And I think the, the biggest thing to come out of the heat tomorrow would be we want to be better for next year. Um, whether yeah. that is by drafting a guy who you think will help you next year, or like you said, maybe making some trades to set yourself up to become better, whether it's by, like you said, making sure you can keep PJ Tucker or getting 
a nice like little group of assets to trade for Bradley Beal or whoever it might be in a couple of weeks. So um, it's the draft is about the future, but it has to be about the present, I think. Yeah, it's a good way to put it. Well, so what's your prediction? What do you think that he do tomorrow night? I, I think you're right. It's going to be a trade. Of, I would guess a trade down if they can make it. Again, like, we don't know. I don't know every team situation and whether there are teams in early second round who might love one of these guys and want to trade up. But I think a trade down is most likely because I don't think any of these guys that I've listed that I really like are going to fall. Um, do you think there's a chance they would, like, try to trade up? If Like, let's say, like, let's just, we keep, yeah. I keep using E.J. Liddell's name because he's my favorite and I'm sure the Heat like him. Let's say they love him. If he's there at 22, could you see a situation where they trade up? Yeah, I mean, I don't see why. I just thought they don't have any second round picks to trade. So, right, like, that's what the do you thing. trade? They don't have a lot to trade. So I don't know what they would trade. That's kind of my yeah. thought. Like, process when they, when they, um, they trade up for Shabazz, um, but they, had to trade. I don't. I don't know exactly. Remember exactly what the package was, but I think it was like some another second round pick, maybe, and or a, or future first round pick. Like they traded other things. I don't. I don't think the Heat are trading a, like an additional first round pick to get Angel Adele. Yurt. Yurt. I mean, Yurt. maybe. Maybe, but I mean, that's that's you have to really be in on Angel Adele to do that yeah. because yeah. I'm not saying Yurt's going to be an all star, but so he's like, he's actually be, you know like. The, yeah. yeah, you know he's, like, legit, like, guy who has upside to be a rotation player. Like, you think E.J. Liddell is going to be a consistent rotation player. Yeah, like, he's your D- Dwayne Dedman successor, so. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah, exactly. So, um, I agree. I think, they'll, I think they'll try to move back. And there's, I mean, there are teams, like, a bunch of teams with multiple second-round picks that might be willing to deal one. Like, the Timberwolves have three second-round picks, 40, 48, and 50. Orlando has two, 32, and 35. Um, the Warriors have two of 51 and 55. Like, there's like six, seven, eight teams with multiple second round picks. And that might be, you know, the teams yeah. you're looking at who are willing to, you know, to, to give one up. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, I think that makes sense. I, I, I think that's probably the most likely answer, depending on who falls. But I think banking on that no one they love is going to fall to them because 27, that doesn't, you know, 27, you're, Drafting guys with question marks and reasons they they're yeah. twenty instead of twenty two. I think a trade down um, because again, like uh, Orlando or something, could they maybe like love Kendall Brown because of his upside? The fact that he was like a top ten recruit in the country and um, was part yeah. of a good color team. And, and like, they're not looking to win now; they're looking for upside. So maybe that's yeah, yeah, exactly. That's... Like like it's there. There are going to be guys who I think other teams are more interested in than the Heat are. Uh, in that range because you know there, there's a couple like former five-star guys who are in like Peyton Watson's another one who was a five-star um, and just kind of like was buried and like not like he was bad but like UCLA was really good and like they're really veteran heavy um, uh, Patrick Baldwin who went to Wisconsin Milwaukee he went to Milwaukee yeah Milwaukee um and was a five to play for his Look dad. Look at me giving you know, uh, correcting you on college basketball. You know, I, I, we, it we must be draft time. Play, get him, yeah, get him <laughs> confused. Um, went to play for his dad there. It was just like a disastrous situation. You know, he could have gone to Duke and been there, like point guard this year. Who's like huge point guard. Like, there's mm-hmm. some interesting guys who, like a team like Orlando or or even Minnesota, who's like still kind of young. And you know, I know they're at the point now where they're hoping they're be in the playoffs every year and win a series. You know, I'm sure they they're obviously to win a series next year they're still in a position where they can draft some of these upside guys to develop um yeah uh Denny edwards so like just, if you're a bad team there are a lot more interesting guys at 27 i think than there are going to be in the for 40s the yeah yeah i agree i yeah. now i'm like starting yeah. to think it's like 60 40 they trade the pick after this conversation i i think the fact like again the, the odds are they're going to trade the pick i think you're right it's just what yeah. what are they going to trade? How far are they going to trade down? Or are they going to try to maybe even trade up? Well, I was going to say like, what are the chances what? you think they don't? What do you trade think? Out they, entirely. Do you think there's a? I was going to say, do you think they, there's a chance they trade the pick and they don't even make a pick tomorrow? Probably not. I think for that to happen, for that to happen, they would basically have to trade down with the team. Just you know, go from twenty seven to fifty two or something. Yeah. I mean, they get a and future pick. They get future picks. And then get a future pick, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, 
I think yeah, I think it's probably like a ninety percent chance they still they still make a trade or even ninety five percent chance they make make a trade in the draft. I mean, make a pick in the draft. Um, again, I just I just don't know if it's going to be at twenty seven. Now that we've had this forty minute conversation, I will say that I now am less like I don't expect them at this point to make a pick at number twenty seven because it really doesn't make sense. Like if they can get value out of it um, and they get an extra pick out of it, they should do that because at twenty seven you're not getting a ready made player unless. Again, something like someone unexpectedly drops you, which in that case, you make the pick. But chances are that's not going to happen. All right. One other guy I realized I forgot to mention, who this is kind of more if you trade down, Ron Harper Jr. Like him. A little slow. He's apparently really? he's fat, bad, bad. Um, he had like a really high body fat percentage. But, you know, he's he's a wing with pedigree, like was really good at Rutgers. Um, I think has some tools, really long wingspans, so has some tools defensively. Um, hit a uh, crazy half court shot to beat Ohio State early in the year. I, if I, I think that was who they beat. Um, but I, I, I like him. Rutgers is like terrible. Like, and he made Rutgers pretty good. So like, what? What? what sorry, going to other guy real quick. What do you know about um, Musa Diabete from Michigan? Went to IMG, six eleven forward. Played one year. People Michigan. like him. He like he didn't. Mich- that Michigan team was such a mess this year. I kind of don't trust anything that happened there this year. I like that team was like preseason top five and li- really should not have made the tournament. He he worked out for the Heat. And I've like according yeah. to different things I've read, like he's well, you know the Heat the are going to really like, like the Michigan guys because yeah, of the Jordan power connection. Yeah. yeah, and he's like another guy. I think he was a five star recruit or really high like yeah. big recruit. He has the body six eleven two ten yeah. like forward he's from France. Um, Big guy who, like, did not quite pan out in his one year at Michigan. But, like, again, yeah, like, these are all, like, I think if you trade down to 51 or something, like, yeah. that's that's what I'm taking a flyer on these higher upside guys. Right. I, I don't know yeah. if I'm taking a flyer on a high upside guy at 27. That oh, I no. This, this type of guy might be even undrafted, right? I mean, but I, yeah. just from a lot of the guys they worked out, it's interesting. A lot of the guys that he worked out were, like, projected second-round picks. So it almost makes you think, like, <laughs> Like they're, 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 they're already yeah. eyeing guys in the second round, right? Because they know that the chances are they'll probably be there. Um, we'll see. I, it's, it's that's, what make, that's what makes draft night fun is, like, we just don't know uh, what's going to happen. Anything could happen. Like, it's hard for us uh, who are covering it because you can't really, like, pre-write much because you don't know what, you know, you don't know who they're going to pick until they do at whatever, 1030 at night, if it's number 27 or in the second round, it could be close to midnight that we don't know what the Heat are, are yeah. going to do. So... It'll be interesting to see. Um, but, yeah, it's – at least the Heat have a pick. They haven't had a pick in three of the last six drafts. Yeah. kind of been uneventful. So they have a pick. There's some intrigue uh, on draft night for them. All right. Uh, let's wrap things up there. Um, we could have talked about some undrafted guys we like, but we'll, we'll wait until after they actually sign some guys and and talk about how much we like them and which the, who the next Gabe Vincent. Yeah. Or who the next. Because someone uh, – Colin Gillespie, like him. Kobe Co- Coburn is gigantic. I don't know if he's that good, but in the modern NBA, but very very big fella. David Roddy, very fun. I would recommend watching some David Roddy. Okay. Um, yeah, there, there's some guys. Um, you can follow Anthony on Twitter at Anthony underscore Chang. He will have all your draft coverage on Thursday. Um, and like we said, kind of nonstop on the NBA calendar this time of year, straight from the playoffs into the draft, free agency, and then you go to summer league. So. Anthony, uh, no off season at least until two no weeks. It was till, a two week off season for me. No sleep till August, basically. Yeah, when my second baby is born, and then in I the will second off season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it should uh, be fun. You can follow me on Twitter at db wilson too. Um, uh, I'm kind of all over the place these days, like usual. But I love the NBA draft, so I'm glad to be able to come on and talk about it today. Um, so thanks as always for listening, and we will uh, talk to you guys next week.